Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's go over what happened in the market today and let's make you a success in the stock market. So check this out. Um, on the S&P 500, we just did a lot of sideways action after a gap down, right? Usually it's gap down to go down, but we know we're tight. We're trading in a range bound situation right now. After that huge CPI move here on the daily, you can see we went from 377, 375, all the way to over 400. So the market, you know, just like in Thanksgiving dinner, if you eat a whole bunch of Thanksgiving dinner, you're gonna be sluggish, you might throw up, and you might move sideways for a bit. So the market does the same thing, right? After it eats a whole lot, it kind of it has to digest what the move was. So that big pop up, the big move up, we kind of digested that and moved sideways to down. So right now we did gap down on some news from uh, Bullard, which is a federal uh, official that is uh, in the central banking system. And he announced that he thinks that we need to go as high as 7% right now. Right now we're at like 4.5 in December if we do that last 50 basic height. So uh, we're at four right now. If we do the December 50, uh, 50 instead of 75, we'll be at 4.5. He thinks we need to go to seven, which is probably the truth, but the market didn't want to hear that. So the market tank dropped off um, and it went down today. But I want to show you a move in Alibaba. This is a stock that I anticipated a $10 move overnight well, that $10 move didn't happen overnight, it happened during the day. So the stock market likes to trick you every once in a while. So on Alibaba, we can see that we dropped to $75, uh, $76, and we jumped all the way to $85.68. So $10 move just about, um, pretty much on Alibaba. Now, this stock has been overly sold off uh, just because of China being so roughed and um, stringent on the COVID rules, on businesses taking more profits from them and just running a communistic, um, you know, dictatorship, uh, authoritarian state, right? So China likes to kind of uh, take control of the companies that are within China. So you can see Baba kind of uh, just been selling off for weeks here and it had a high of 319 per share and we're all the way down to $84. Wow, what a brutal move, right? Lost, you know, two thirds of its value. And then we had this decent earnings um, come in at uh, this morning before market at 5.38 a.m. And then we saw that big sell-off in the first minute, the first couple minutes of the day, and then a big rally um, through the day on BABA for the earnings not being so bad and for them making money and not losing money. Um, so that's that. So that was SPY, Alibaba. Let's look at Q's. Q's, a lot of people trade triple Q options because QQQ, a little secret here, usually moves a little bit more than SPY. So for every $2 Q's moves, SPY usually moves a dollar. Why is that? Well, uh, Apple, Microsoft are the number one and number two holdings of Q's and they move a lot. So when they move, Q's moves, and when technology moves, it usually moves double as fast as other stuff. But right now, we're in a restrictive economy and we're starting to lose that, right? Oil and uh, more industrials and commodities are moving better than technology at this point because technology has trouble with valuations, high valuations when inflation is high and the rates on the 10 year and five year are moving up. So we can talk more about that later, but on the weekly chart, we have cues right here, right? We have this big white candle and now we have this red test candle. Um, are we gonna, next week, is this just a little doji? Like, are we gonna keep going? We don't know. So if a doji forms this week and we kind of just stay here without turning white or without doing a shooting star, that's like an indecision candle, but that's, a good thing more than a bad thing because then we can keep continuing to go higher. But that's saying investors don't really know where we're heading next. That's kind of what that candle says when it's a doji, means that that body is kind of just a little piece and it's in the center of that, okay? So the weekly's pointing up, daily's pointing up to sideways and we had that big jump to 292 and then we're coming back down. But the 233 crossed, it crossed uh, today, or sorry, this is the 13 minute chart. Um, but the 233 is starting to cross like um, it's a little bit ahead of the daily because it's two candles versus one candle, okay, per per day. So the 13 minute chart did gap down. We filled the gap, exceeded the gap, right? The gap was just 284.80 and went to 286 and went back down. So as you can see here, it's a very good example of, you know, Q's 
going from 286 yesterday close to 280.66 all the way up to 286. So it dropped down, closed the gap, and that's good to continue to go up or down, right? Doesn't mean we're going up or down, but it's good that we're, we're closing gaps because we don't want to gap and then keep going and keep going and never test that gap because the algorithms love to do it and big institutional investors like to do it as well. So I'm happy we closed the gap on Qs and SPY. Wanted to show you BABA and then yeah, I mean really the market was just kind of going sideways today. Nothing to really talk about. Let's see what happens Friday. Friday could be interesting and then we do have the short day on Black Friday next week and then Thanksgiving Thursday the markets will be closed. So market will close at 1 p.m. Black Friday Eastern time and then the market will be completely closed Thursday. So only really Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will be some action. Friday usually isn't much, maybe in the first hour or two and then the algorithms turn off and that's it. So thanks for joining. Appreciate your time like always. And please like and subscribe. Peace.